Hi friends and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, hello. My name's George Agambar and I'm a UK music producer. Today's video is all about Logic's plugin called Chromaverb. Now I have mentioned this plugin previously and so I thought it was time that I look at it in a bit more depth. So if you want to learn a bit more about this, make sure you stay tuned and hit the subscribe button and notification bell for new videos every Wednesday. And things will never be the same when I hear I have made a video all about what reverb is, the different types of reverbs and their uses previously on my channel that I'll make sure I leave a link to in the description in case you want to go and watch that video before you carry on watching this one. So Chromaverb is Logic's reverb plugin that was introduced in the Logic 10.4 update back in 2018 I believe. Now I wanted to make this video because I think that reverbs are often overlooked in everything that they can do. Normally we choose a reverb preset and we don't really change it too much, we just kind of go with it. But especially in Chromaverb, there is so, so much more that we can control and customise. So let's have a look at the plugin. When you open the plugin it looks like this, perhaps a bit daunting to those new to the plugin. The first thing to mention is that there are two preset menus which allow you to do similar but slightly different things. There is a menu in the middle here which allows you to select the room sound and then there are presets in the top left corner. So you may be wondering, why do we need both? Well, the set presets that you choose from the top left hand corner not only choose the room sound but also choose effects such as the damping EQ, the output EQ and other parameters too which we're going to talk about a bit later. And then on the first screen, we see the typical parameters that you'd find on a reverb, which I've explained in my previous video. But what's important to mention is this EQ type graph in the middle, which is called the damping EQ. This is one of my favourite features of the plugin, because I think it really helps people who like to work visually. The plugin will show a real-time visualisation of the parameters you've set, which looks like this. I feel so weak, I can't sleep. So what is damping? Damping is all to do with the absorption of high frequencies as the reverb begins to decay. So if you have a low damping, there is a low absorption of high frequencies and we get a really bright sounding reverb because those high frequencies are still present and vice versa. So with the damping EQ in Chromaverb, we can use the EQ filters to change the way the reverb decays and therefore the sound of it, which I think is really cool. So here's a vocal track with and without the damping EQ on and we're going to try and get a really nice, rich, smooth sounding reverb when we're using the damping EQ. Let's have a listen. I feel so weak, I can't sleep, I hear your voice in everyone I meet. I feel so weak, I can't sleep, I hear your voice in everyone. As I hope you could hear, the EQ made the reverb sound a lot smoother, a lot darker and a lot richer. Okay, so, so far I've probably just recapped things that you may have already known or heard about within Chromaverb. But it can do so much more than what I've mentioned already, which is why I think this plugin is so brilliant and versatile. So let's have a look. We need to go over to the details page by clicking details in the right hand corner and we see the plugin change. Again there's another EQ and some more parameters along the bottom. So let's start by looking at what the parameters do. The quality drop down menu allows you to choose the quality of the sound of the reverb. Low quality will give you a grainy noisy reverb, high quality gives you a clear and precise one and ultra is very shiny and smooth, a very surgical sound to me. Next we have the mod controls, but before we talk about this, we need to know a bit about LFO. LFO sounds for low frequency oscillations. These are oscillations of a waveform that are normally below 20 hertz. So normally within our hearing range, we can't really hear them. So they don't actually directly affect the sound of our audio. However, they do affect the way that the parameters work. Simply put, 
If we put an LFO on a signal and then send that signal to a parameter, it would be like us manually oscillating the parameter backwards and forwards. However, an LFO does it a lot more smoothly and it's a lot less work for us. Now we need to understand the mod controls a bit better. The mod speed sets the speed of the built-in LFO and therefore the frequency of it. So it will change the speed of the wobbles you hear, quite simply put. The mod depth sets the depth of modulation, so how obvious it sounds. And the mod source sets the type of sound wave used for modulation, so it will basically change the tone of them. Then we have a smoothing fader. This works in different ways depending on your mod source. For the sine and noise sources, the signal is saturated, so it's made to sound warmer because harmonics have been added to the audio. For the random source, the noise is removed from the signal. There is then the early and late fader, which allows you to choose the balance between the early and late reflections of the reverb. The width changes the stereo width of the reverb. That basically means that it changes the perceived difference between the sound in the left and right speakers or monitors. And then the mono maker fader, which you can turn off and on, removes any stereo information below the frequency set by the fader. And this can be useful because it helps clear up the sound of your reverb and of your mixes. Okay, so that was a lot of new information and a lot of new parameters. Now I could show you an example of how changing each parameter will change the sound. However, if I did that, I feel like we may be here for a couple of hours. And so my best advice would be to go into the plugin and have a play around yourself, one parameter at a time, and hear what it does to your audio. Don't try and get carried away and try and do everything at once. Just do it nice and simply and methodically, and that will help you learn the quickest. The last thing to talk about is this new EQ graph, which is in the same place as the last one. However, this EQ works slightly differently. It allows you to EQ the track and the reverb sound together. So any changes you make to this EQ here will also EQ the dry track as well when the plugin is turned on. In all honesty, I probably wouldn't opt to use this EQ graph in the plugin. I would much rather send my signal to a bus with the Chromaverb plugin and then a separate EQ plugin following that where I can EQ the track. And the reason I say this is because then the EQ doesn't seem hidden from me. I don't have to go into an actual plugin onto a separate page in the plugin to find the EQ on my track. It's right there on the bus and easy to see, which is a big advantage if you're working on a busy mix. However, that being said, using a separate EQ plugin can be a bit more CPU heavy and I suppose could possibly introduce a bit more latency. And so, you know, there are disadvantages and advantages to using each technique. So that's Logic's Chromaverb plugin. As I've said, I think it's brilliant and so versatile. And at the moment, I'm finding myself using it as my go-to reverb plugin. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful and interesting. Let me know what you thought in the comments below and if there are any other videos you'd like to see in the future. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and notification bell and I will see you again soon.